Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today we have some more concerning news about India as a RBI or the Reserve Bank of India sticks to its stand on cryptocurrencies and wants them all banned. So we'll take a little trip down memory lane, uh, what has been happening over the last uh, couple of weeks and months, and then get into uh, some things that uh, the banks have been doing and uh, how this smells a little fishy to me. On top of that, uh, let's take a quick look at uh, the fact that uh, I made an NFT because I didn't really understand what the heck they were. So the best way to do things is just dive in head first and actually get them done. So we'll take a look at my super fantastic NFT that took me uh, a whole 10 seconds to make and uh, we will go from there. So first, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, March 15th, uh, almost high noon El Paso, Texas time. So we traveled all the way back. Uh, we are here. The uh, investment property has already been set up and uh, just waiting for people to come on in. I think they come in uh, tonight, matter of fact. So. Uh, hopefully it all works out. That's the great thing about Airbnb. So we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, this is the total market cap, uh, 1.7 trillion. Average daily sentiment. And of course, we're using Trade the Chain because it uh, does all that scraping of data throughout all the different blog posts and websites and, and uh, integrates uh, one of five with uh, of cryptocurrency companies to integrate directly with Twitter. And the average daily sentiment for cryptocurrency, 57 out of 100, which is not too bad when you have the possibility of a huge country with over a billion people talking about banning uh, the entire Bitcoin and cryptocurrency uh, crypto sphere. So uh, that's uh, not too bad. I, I remember, you know, years ago, this would have crippled us for quite a long time. And uh, to, now today we're just like, eh, whatever, India, whatever you want to do, you know, just make up your mind and then you know, shoot there. So uh, that's what's going on. Let's see. Hottest on Twitter. I don't know any of these. Balancer. Sounds good. Troy, Cody. Engine, which I'm probably going to get into as I've been taking a look at that more and more. Uh, it only makes sense, you know, as they integrate with all these different gaming platforms and you can do a bunch of NFTs for all the different things that people need on gaming because of gaming and esports and everything else is going to be huge. Why not Engine? So I'll uh, probably do a little uh, video on that. But let's see what exactly is going on as far as uh, the numbers. So. Bitcoin was at a, almost 62,000 and it dropped, uh, dropped precipitously. Let me pull this up actually so you can see it. Uh, about what is going on here. And I gotta tell you, uh, not too bad for a country which, is, like I said, about to ban uh, crypto if they do it. Who knows if they do it? I don't know. So uh, that is what's going on with uh, Bitcoin itself. Uh, Ethereum, yeah, pretty good. Uh, only down 4%. 4%. Let's see, anything up? Ah. Let's see, I think down, down 7%, 21% for VeChain. Uh, VeChain just got listed on crypto.com. So I'm sure people are buying that up like crazy. So good for you guys. I'm a holder myself. And again, super biased. All the things that I own, I'm always talking about them. Like Algorand, I don't know own it. So I'm not going to talk about it that much. If something fantastic comes out, I will. But uh, just how I am, biased. And uh, that's about it. So, ooh, 20, hey, 27% for Engine Coin. I probably should get into that at some point before it takes off. Anyhow, so that's what's going on in the market. Let's just uh, let's just jump into today's top story, shall we? So this one, I remember when I first when when I first got in the cryptocurrency, and China was the big bad player, and they were, you know, uh, going back and forth between, you know, we're going to ban it, we're not going to ban it. And actually, the first NFT that I created was all about uh, China banning cryptocurrency. And that day, this was back in uh, December, December of 2019. Uh, that was, I mean, it dropped so much in one day just because China said, eh, we're thinking about banning it. And they said the same thing that India is talking about. We like blockchain. We don't like Bitcoin. And currencies, or well, we're going to do that. And we're not going to let currencies come in. So the same thing's happening here. So what exactly is going on? So... Uh, New Delhi, the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, is sticking to its stance and they want to ban cryptocurrencies because, you know, why not? Anyhow, while asserting that the technology of blockchain should be encouraged, again, blockchain's good, but cryptocurrency is bad. Blockchain's fantastic, but cryptocurrency, we just can't have that. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you in a bit. Uh, they said that a, a currency, this is the Reserve Bank of India, they say, look, a currency is a sovereign right of a country and it cannot be assigned to any individual entity. Uh, we just can't have that. We can't have that slip of power happen. It has to be with the country. And remember, they're the Reserve Bank of India. It's not like, like the Federal Reserve in America. Uh, there's, they're about as federal as uh, Federal Express. 
They're not a federal agency. They work closely with the governments, but it's not a government agency. Reserve Bank of India, they're talking about, oh, it's sovereign. Only the nations can really decide about it. Well, they can decide. And they already decided that this was okay because this is what happened uh, March 5th of 2020, just a short year ago, where the India's highest court, they overturned the cryptocurrency trading ban. They go, look, you can't do that to people. If people want to take their harder money and they want to trade it for cryptocurrency, then let them do that. And that is what the highest court, kind of like the America's Supreme Court, uh, decided at that point. And they said, okay, sounds good. And then from there, nothing really happened with India. Everyone was happy. Uh, was ZRX, the uh, exchange opened up, everything was good. And then we had this nice little, uh, little article that came about that said, hey, look, um, we're thinking about banning it again, but don't worry, because the finance minister, she predicts a very calibrated stance. And what she said was this. She goes, obviously, uh, the Reserve Bank will be taking a quorum on how, what kind of unofficial currency, cryptocurrency will have to be planned and how it has to be regulated. So nowhere in here is she talking about, you know what, we're going we're gonna to look at this blockchain and really go from there. She's talking about currency and cryptocurrency. And then all of a sudden they're like, nope, uh, we're just going to go back on that. And uh, that's just how it's going to be. Anyhow, to finish up, uh, the central bank has also raised security risks linked to cryptocurrencies. How many times have we heard about this? Oh, it's going to give rise to money laundering, terror financing, and, you know, the cartels. That's all they use is Bitcoin. They have never used the U.S. dollar or the ruple or the pound or the yen or the yuan. They just... They've only used Bitcoin. And once they get Bitcoin, it's gonna be so much easier for them to do things. Well, and of course, the anonymity of the transaction. So let's just talk about that for a second, shall we? So when we talk about the banks, Reserve Bank of India working with the uh, retail banks, it's the same thing here. Uh, you know, the uh, Federal Reserve is like, you know what? We can't have this. We can't have this kind of uh, money laundering because our banks are the highest level of ethics and morals and wait what's this so wells fargo you know a little fraudulent savings and checking accounts on behalf of wells fargo clients without their consent millions of them and the, the only complaint when they started to see all these different frauds being charged or different uh you know different uh, accounts that they were uh, mysteriously opened in their names and going hey why am i getting charged for these accounts i never opened these oh uh, well you owe us and uh, that went through millions and millions of people of course they got busted for that and what happened? They only paid a fine. Me and you do that, we're in jail. But banks do that, that's just the cost of doing business. And on top of that, you got these little things like the JP Morgan Chase scandal, 30 billion in fines and counting. Then you had uh, ING, where they're like, uh, we missed this uh, almost billion dollars of money laundering from cartels. We just, we just couldn't figure it out. We just, it just doesn't make any sense to us. We're only the banks. <sighs> and on and on. And on we go. So I'll get to that later. But this is the thing. Um, when you talk about like, you know, the banks want to really do all these things and uh, or the, 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 the Federal Reserves or the Reserve Bank, the reason why they want to do it is because they want to keep control of what's going on. And it really just comes down to this. This is the last sentence. I was, as I was reading this, this, this article, I'm like, where are they going to say it? Just say it. Just say it. I know they're going to do it. In recent weeks, the RBI has also talked about bringing its own digital currency which is different from cryptocurrencies, of course, of course. Why would they want to let any other cryptocurrency out, like a Bitcoin, like a Ethereum, like a, an XRP, like a Cardano, or anything like that, anything that she, that she can use as a currency uh, into the country when they can just create themselves because it's a sovereign right, right? Uh, there's no way that the common people could figure this out and it can make it work for them. So, of course, when they talk about we want to ban these things, this is why, because they want to make it themselves. And that's okay. I mean, that's what you, want, what you want to do. Hopefully, the Indian people rise up and say, you can't do this to us. And hopefully, the lawmakers come through and say, you can't ban this. We're going to work together, come to the table. Just like uh, what the finance minister said, hey, we're going to work this through with the reserve banks and make this actually happen. And they're not going to ban anything. It's not going to be as bad as you thought it was. And here we are. That's pretty bad. So when you take a look at this, this is why when you see these types of articles where a French lawmaker signs a petition to allow central banks to buy and hold Bitcoin, just be careful with this because it's just one lawmaker and just one person signing a petition. So the real question is, can you get this through all of your uh, legislature and actually make turn this into law and not just uh, like, hey, this is something we should do. So um, 
this is what I think on this one. I just threw this in there because I'm like, it's just interesting that we've got some people who are on the right side of, of history and other people who are just trying to uh, just stall what's going on. But uh, in my personal opinion, uh, I don't think that this will actually go through. I don't think there will actually be a ban. because it's. I mean, let's say they do ban cryptocurrency. Let's say they do ban exchanges. Well, that's great because in the rest of the world, it's like, you don't want to use it? That's cool because the all of us, We'll just continue to use this and we'll have to leave you behind. And uh, I think for uh, economic equality, it wouldn't really behoove them to do those types of things. Again, these are just my opinions. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, what the heck are NFTs? Non-fungible tokens. I didn't really get it. I, I didn't really understand uh, you know, how it all worked and everything else. So I just had to create one. And actually, I had talked about this over the weekend, and one of uh, my subscribers, he said, Rob, you just don't get it. He goes, take um, uh, Gronkowski from the, uh, well, what was the Patriots and now the Buccaneers. So what he did was instead of, you know, going to like a, a football card company and saying, hey, I want to put my likeness on cards and then people can buy my football card and then you guys can take 99% and I'll get, I'll get a percentage. What Gronk did is he goes, you know what? I'm just going to create a non-fungible token of myself as a football uh, on a football playing card, and whoever uh, wants to buy it can own it digitally, and that's it. So you totally do what cryptocurrency digital assets are supposed to do, which is cut out the middleman entirely, and then he's selling those things like hotcakes. And I'm like, hmm, how the heck does that work? So this is what I did. I went back, and one of my first videos that I ever did, and uh, I just was talking about China uh, again, how, you know, this, this uh, little FUD uh, happened where they're like, we don't like Bitcoin, but we love blockchain. So this came about and I said, you know what, I'm going to see if I can just sell this. So I went to this place called OpenSea, OpenSea dot, what is it? OpenSea.io. And I said, okay, I just took the uh, thumbnail and I uploaded it and I said, okay, uh, this, and I just gave a stupid description of it. And uh, in like half an hour, uh, I got an offer for 0 0.01 uh, wrapped ETH, W ETH, for like 17 bucks. And uh, that's it. I can't accept this offer because I don't think this is worth anything. And I'm going to tell Ravs here, just, you know, don't buy it because, you know, just spend your money on something that's worthwhile like Voyager or Cardano or VeChain or something like that. Don't buy this as goofy. And I just want to see if it would actually, you know, happen. And I don't know how many other offers I have. I think I only have one right now, but still it's kind of, it's just kind of a little goofy that you can do these types of things and people are buying it, but they don't know what they're buying. It's just, to me, I think it's just worthless, but that's just my opinion on what's going on. I think that there are, the NFTs will be huge, especially like we talked about with, with engine coin and those types of things. I mean, even like unstoppable domains, those are NFTs, uh, these domains that you're buying. But uh, for me, I kind of look at it like there's a big difference between going uh, to an, an art gallery, uh, let's say downtown New York, and going to the bargain bin at Walmart. They're both art, right? Just like there's, they're, they're, they're both NFTs here. Like this is an NFT, and the one that Beebles sold for like 70 million or how much crazy it was. Uh, but for whatever reason, that is awesome, and this is trash. And I think it's the same thing of like art in general, like I don't have the eye for it. So people look at it like, this is great. I can't, you know, it's amazing. I got to buy this. Sure. And, but I think it's going to be very few of those that actually have value. I think the majority are just going to be in the bargain bin at a Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart type of thing, where it's just like, this is just trash. This is just a throwaway NFT. And that's just what it is. Obviously you can't get an NFT at Walmart. I'm just saying uh, these things will just be like, you know, out in the open and uh, not that great. This is just how I see it. I also see this as uh, kind of like with cryptocurrency digital assets. I think there's gonna be uh, a good amount that'll make it, you know, 20, 30, 40, I don't know. But uh, the uh, 5,000 or so that we have, most are going away. And it's the same thing with NFTs. Now the big question is, how do you find those? And for that, uh, I really have no answer. And uh, I'll tell you what I know, I'll tell you what I don't know. I have no idea about that one. I will say this, don't, don't buy on a secondary source like OpenSea uh, because those people already bought someplace cheap and they put it on there and they want you to buy their garbage. Not that it's all garbage. There's a lot of great stuff in there, I'm sure. I mean, whatever. But uh, I'm just saying don't be caught up in this, this whole thing. Look for the ones that are, you know, just like, just like a digital asset. 
don't look for ones that are already, you know, $100,000 or something like that. Go for a little bit lower and see if it has any kind of legs and go from there. If you, you know, if you buy a, an, an NFT for 100,000 and then it goes to 1,000, well, then you're pretty screwed. But if you buy something for like five bucks or 10 bucks and it goes to zero, not a big deal. That's, uh, that's the only advice that uh, I would give myself because I can't give financial advice. And that's the big thing. And speaking of NFTs, finally, uh, I trust <laughs> they're, they're giving away an, an NFT. And uh, Anthony, he, he sent this to me and I was like, I don't know what this, what this is, man. And he goes, he goes, well, it's this NFT, I'm gonna give giveaway. And then people are gonna win, you know, a free for life. Uh, I trust account. I trust is the uh, crypto IRA that I use. And I was like, I still don't understand. But I don't get the whole thing. He goes, okay, well, I'll come on your show and explain it. So Anthony will be here on Friday to explain what the heck this is all going on. It's just a giveaway. I'm sure it's cool. I mean, these guys do good things. I love them. And uh, that is it. So, so look, uh, first of all, thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing because uh, all these videos we talk about are very time sensitive, like we just talked about uh, a little bit ago. Also, if you wanna take a look at iTrust, there's a link in the description. That is the crypto IRA that I'm using, and that's where I'm going to be paying uh, no taxes as everything appreciates. So uh, there, are some, there are some nuances. So I did a video, it's about 20 minutes long. You can watch that. I'll link it at the end or look in the description, and that is all. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one. Since you took the time to watch this video till the end, you can access some of my paid courses for free today. You just need to look for the link in the description that says, free, private, access. Once you click on that link, you will see an access web page. All you need to do to gain free access to the private membership club is type in 7, 6, 5, 4. You can then join my internet marketing membership club for free. I also listed some other very useful information below. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and don't forget to like and click the notification bell to get updates. Okay, until next time, take care.